get you in contact with the one who created the universe. All other paths are dead ends. Now that's a pretty exclusive statement. And anyone who believes that statement is going to be castigated in our, our culture as evil because you're exclusive. And in order to be accepted, you've got to accept us. If you don't accept us, the culture says, then we don't accept you and we're going to break our own rule and not tolerate you. Well, if you're going to be tolerant, tolerate me. And where did this idea of, not, of intolerance come from? I'm pretty tolerant. I, this is what I believe, but I'm not going to kill you if you don't believe me. I mean, I, I'm not intolerant. I just, I just believe this. And I shouldn't be labeled evil because of what I believe. I mean, I'll defend Sean Penn's right to say whatever he wants, as long as he stands for my right to say that he's wrong. Like the Dixie Chicks, something that I, I like to slap them around. <laughs> Whenever the, and it's been a long time, and they've like publicly apologized. But when they said George Bush is a loser and was saying all kinds of stupid stuff at one of their concerts somewhere, and then people started saying, "Oh, I'm not going to buy a Dixie Chick." Well, nobody, but nobody said anything whenever um, Pink wrote her song, Mr. President. Dear Mr. President, have you heard that song? No. She basically talked, she's talking about George Bush basically talking about how uh, people are getting killed and all this other stuff in this war and that it's his fault and stuff. And nobody, I thought it was funny because everyone yeah. flipped out when Dixie Chick said something, but Pink writes a song well, that's just is, front out there about the president. The funny thing was no Dixie Chick say. said that, okay, which, uh, I, they have a right to say it. They have a right to an opinion of our president. No big deal. So they said this about him. And then whenever people stood up and said, I'm not going to buy tickets to the Dixie Chick concerts. In fact, a bunch of people burned their tickets. They, they burned their CDs. It was on the news. They started saying things like, I don't like the Dixie Chicks anymore. I think they're stupid. What did the Dixie Chicks do? I can't believe people are so intolerant. Whatever happened to our right to speech? How come we can't say whatever we want? You did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. You did say what you wanted. Yeah. And now I'm saying what I want. And you're saying I'm evil for saying what I want. Which is that I don't like what you said. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, here, I think this. And if you don't agree with me, you're intolerant. So get out. You just became intolerant, which is what you accused me of. You're a hypocrite. And that's what our culture is becoming. It's becoming hypocritical by saying that we don't tolerate you because you don't agree with us. You just became intolerant, which is what you accused me of. It's so stupid. <laughs> I don't understand it, but that's where our culture is heading. And it's becoming dangerous to have an opinion yeah. in our culture. You just have to like just shut up and go with the flow. Or you're all of a sudden evil, and they will use the media to destroy <coughs> you. Case in point, Carrie Prejean. Now, she brought a little bit of it on herself by uh, being a Christian walking around in skimpy bikini trying to compete for Miss whatever she was competing for and then having pictures of herself that were very inappropriate. You, you kind of walked into that one yourself there, Carrie. But my point is, she said what she believed. She was asked the question, what do you believe? She never advocated violence or anything else against any homosexual group or person. Someone asked her, what are your views on homosexual marriage? And because she believes that marriage should be between a man and a woman, that moron, Perez Hilton, went ballistic. And he really, I'm glad he did, because he revealed himself to be a complete and total moron. In fact, a lot of homosexual groups asked him to just shut up because it was making them all look bad. Because everyone was saying, look, see what the homosexuals think of us? And they call us intolerant. So he completely walked into it. You're calling me, oh, I'm intolerant? So look at all the things you called me. Just because I believe a man should marry a woman. Well, you should apply the same level of tolerance to your own words as you expect me to apply to mine. I'm okay with you. If you want to marry a dog, go for it. Then acknowledge that I have the right to stand up and say a man should marry a woman, and I'm going to fight for it to stay that way. Proposition 8, California. So the, our culture, it's come to the point where if you're going to make a statement on a university or in the public forum at all, you've got to be willing to be, be called evil. <laughs> and you've got to be willing to identify evil. 
they're trying to cut it off to where you won't step out on a limb and call anything bad. Because the moment I call something evil, what have I done? I've made a judgment about it. I've appealed to a higher authority than us. Because you and I are peers, we're men. And I can say, you know what, we just disagree. Macaroni and cheese isn't that great. That's one thing. Because that's all relative and it's all limited to our opinions. But whenever I invoke a word like evil, now I've appealed to a higher authority and I've said, look, one better than us, on a totally different level than you and me, believes that to be wrong. And I'm referring to his judgment on that. Well, now I've called in a higher power and, boy, people don't like it when you call in a higher power. Because you're saying that you're right, capital R, and they're wrong, capital W. Who do you think you are, God? And what do you think? You mean you do, well, God talks to you? Really? God talks to you? You're insane. Right. And that's where our culture's going. So at, the more we lose these markers that used to stand in our culture, we didn't used to have to remind people of this stuff because they were everywhere. Everywhere we went, it was being reinforced. What I believed at home was being reinforced by the teachers at school. What I believed at home was being reinforced by movies and television. What I believed at home was being reinforced by Leave it to Beaver and everything else. And the same ideals and principles were being regurgitated throughout our culture and replicated over and over so it was this consistent message. Whereas now, well, you can find any wacko belief system you want on the internet and it emboldens and empowers those people. And yeah, the spaghetti monster that they came up with to make fun of Christianity because you can't disprove its existence. Seriously, you can buy t-shirts and everything. They had, a, they had a logo made of the meatball spaghetti monster thing. Never heard of it. Really? Yeah, it's out there. This, this group, I think it's the Rational Response Squad. Say people that came up with that. Um, um, if you'll make a video of yourself denouncing Christianity. Oh, is it called Blasphemers? Oh, Anyways, they wanted you to make a video and put it on YouTube. Oh, the Blaspheme, um, the Blaspheme Project. Project. Blasphemy Project. Um, they, they tried to get as many people as they could to make a video of themselves denouncing the Holy Spirit and blaspheming and post it on YouTube. And their goal was obvious. Get as many videos of people blaspheming God on YouTube as possible. Inundate it with their idea, their belief system. And they would give you a DVD uh, called the God who was not there, and they're, that's their goal. They're called the Rational Response Squad. Um, they're big fans of um, Richard Dawkins and all that stuff. Um, and I wanted to do the same thing. I mean, I think that we should do as much as we can to get the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is more than just a bunch of like rules. It literally speaks to our conscience, and that's what I was talking about at the very beginning. It's one thing for me to just stand up and say, I believe, in, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I believe in God because blah, 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 blah. And I can like, come up with a thousand scriptures to give them. And they can come up with a thousand reasons why they don't believe it. But if I appeal to their own conscience, now I have a friend working for me that's put there by God. And even after I walk away, something powerful is happening in their conscience because those rules aren't just random. They're deep. They're deeply seated inside of us. You don't have to tell a kid that property matters. All you got to do is give them a toy and let some other kid walk up and take it. They'll let you know about the injustice immediately. They know something wrong has just happened. They may not know how to articulate it, but doggone it, something really terribly wrong has just happened. <laughs> Some God-given right has been taken from me, and I'm going to let the world know it. So those Ten Commandments speak to our conscience, and it's the most powerful thing uh, that you can share with anybody. The Bible calls it the law. It stops the mouth of every man. It makes us all guilty before God. Wouldn't there be more than just the Ten Commandments? Because, I mean, like, a lot of the beliefs out there follow the Ten Commandments and, and like, the right way of living. So isn't there more that you should put out there? Well, the Ten Commandments are the, the only thing that quicken the conscience. The Bible says the one thing is perfect converting the soul, and that's the law. 
So the Ten Commandments is like the starting point 